Hey everyone, welcome to my channel and welcome back to my subscribers. This is Bald Guy Money, and in this video, I am going to show you how much gold would be worth today in dollars if it was still valued like it was at the height of the Roman Empire. In addition to that, I am going to compare our results to our previous calculations done on silver and offer some insights into how we can interpret that today. Just before we start though, please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. I am on a march to get to 10,000 subscribers. We're very close and you can help. Now, for those of you who saw my video on silver in the Roman Empire, you will remember this. We compared the base unit of Roman silver which is the denarius seen on the right here to the base unit of silver we use today, which is the one ounce coin. And you can see that on the left side here. And we made the assumption that considering mining and geological surveying techniques, that the purchasing power of one denarius in Roman times should be comparable to that of a one ounce silver coin in our times. After completing the exercise, I said that based on prices of eating out in ancient Rome, that we could assume an ounce of silver today should be worth around $76 US dollars in today's terms. And before I continue on to explain what that means for gold and the gold to silver ratio, I want to say that there were people who said that I should have made this comparison based on weight. And although I don't agree with that opinion, feel free to multiply my number by six if you think that is the case. But. Moving on to gold and eventually the gold to silver ratio, we are going to keep the same approach as we did for silver, assuming that one gold aureus is equal to a one ounce gold coin. And thankfully for us, since we already have the numbers prepared for silver, the Romans made it very easy for us to figure out the numbers for gold. And that is because one gold aureus in Roman times was equal to 25 silver denarii. And in weight terms, the 7.27 grams of gold was as valuable as 115 grams of silver. So depending on how you want to look at it, if we agree that the $76 is an accurate estimate of the value of one ounce of silver based on Roman pricing, then gold would look something like this. Based solely on the weight difference between the coins, you can see here on the left that it would be a 16 to 1 ratio between gold and silver, and that would value gold at around $1,216 per ounce in today's dollar terms. But if we base it on the coinage, which is how I prefer to do it as it is the norm I have established in the analysis you get a true value of gold today at $1,900 per ounce using my methodology, which is actually not that far off from where we are today. And this is where my message comes in. I admit that it's difficult to make direct comparisons between the prices of things in ancient Rome and modern times. But using this example, which at least has to be ballpark, despite all the variables, teaches us a potentially valuable lesson. The first is, and it is a message I have been trying to hammer home on YouTube, as well as on my Twitter and Instagram recently, and that is gold, despite some of the volatility that we've experienced, over time, especially considering back the 2011 blow off top, it is a great way to preserve your wealth over long periods of time. The role of gold in a portfolio is to be a long term hedge against inflation. Even if you're skeptical about my Rome example, which is perfectly transparent in methodology, there are countless 
other examples you can point to, including the iPhone example I recently covered in my first short here on YouTube that prove that gold is a fantastic hedge against inflation over the long term. But other than saying something about gold, it certainly says as much, if not more, about silver. Remember what I said, there are two ways to examine how silver was valued in Roman times. And although it can be argued that the valuation was arbitrarily set by aristocrats, senators, and plutocrats, it most certainly had something to do with the rate at which Romans were able to pull it out of the earth versus gold. And this video, this content is just another example of why silver, which I admit is in a, to a certain degree speculative, is objectively undervalued. And it is exactly why I continue to stack silver and take advantage of the relatively low prices that we're enjoying right now. Because a day will come when we look at the $20 level for silver the same way people who stacked in the 1990s look at the five and six dollar levels for silver as something that we will never see again. And the reasons are staring us right in the face. And here, just as a reminder from a recent video I did, are the three main reasons why I think that. Point one was for every one ounce of gold mined, now in modern times, approximately nine ounces of silver are mined. Point two was for every one ounce of gold in the ground today, according to geological surveys, there are approximately 19 ounces of silver in the ground. By the way, does that point two ratio sound a little bit familiar to you based on what we've just discussed with respect to how the Romans valued gold and silver? And the third point is that silver is not recycled at the same frequency level of gold, meaning that over time, as we use it more and more in electronics, it will become more and more scarce. And again, the point of me showing you this information, these facts, is to illustrate to you all that not a lot has actually changed since the Roman times, at least when it comes to the physical metal itself. Now, how we value it with fiat currencies and the impact of paper derivatives markets is an additional lens on how we at least perceive the metals. But as I have illustrated in past videos, those are temporary things. And looking back at history can certainly teach us a lot about what we can expect in the future, especially with an understanding that every single fiat money system that has ever existed throughout history has failed. And the value of precious metals, no matter what fiat money system has been the prevailing system of the time, have always had value. Please let me know what you thought about this video in the comments section. Your feedback is very important for me, and I would specifically like you all to share your point of view on whether or not we can actually learn from the Romans when it comes to precious metals. Thank you again for watching. See you in the next one. Bye.